everyone. Uh, welcome back to the uh, Lightboard series about the FeastDX certification. Uh, in this video, we would like to um, dig a little deeper into the next phase of the FeastDX design methodology. Uh, together with me is uh, Jeffrey. My name is Johan. And uh, what we would like to do in this video is uh, go to the next phase, like I just mentioned. In the previous video, we uh, dove into the conceptual architecture. And this uh, architecture diagram that you see here is basically the outcome of what we described in the last video. So you, you see um, two availability zones, um, uh, one on-prem, one in the cloud. Um, we designed a software-defined network on top of it to create true hybridity uh, from an uh, application perspective. And also what was uh, really important from, uh, from a design perspective um, is to have a uh, transparent or a hybrid uh, management layer on top of it. So it's really easy to, uh, to design this. Um, Jeffrey, so today we're going to dive into the lo logical architecture, right? Yeah, just as an example, we're going to you know, pick one of the conceptual constructs here and we're going to you know, translate it into a logical construct. So why are we going to pick uh, a single construct? Well, you could, you could make a, one logical design overview, but uh, in all honesty, you know, the, the light board uh, would be too small because, um, well, drafting an, an entirely um, uh, a conceptual diagram of an entire data center and hybrid cloud solution into one big logical uh, diagram would be really a, a really big diagram with a lot of detail yeah. in it. And that's, that's also how we approach uh, something like that in a, in a VCDX design, right? So we're not going to draw one big massive log logical design, but we're going to dive into different topics and yeah. create a logical design for us. Yeah, so, so personally, I, I do like to, to put you know, one kind, kind of a high level logical right. design yeah. and architecture overview uh, with some more detail than in a uh, conceptual design. But, uh, well, for this example, we're going to take a look at the, the infra-hybridity construct there. That's a nice, you know, conceptual construct. But if we dive into it logically, then, you know, we want to see what it, what it looks like. Okay. So, um, and yeah, and, and, you know, from an enterprise architecture perspective, um, a logical diagram shouldn't really contain products, technologies, and that sort of stuff. But in most VMware VCDX designs, uh, well, that we come across, um, it's pretty usual to, to put in some specific products and details. So yeah. we're not going to be too strict on that, no. on this, okay. uh, this example. Um, yeah, so infra-hybridity, that's, um, um, well, that's a conceptual construct. If we look at it from a logical perspective, then we're going to well, put some more detail into it. And uh, I'm going to walk you through it. So first of all, we're starting with an on-prem data center. And that's connected through a, uh, a construct called a direct connect service. Um, the direct connect is connected to, well, what's called internally a T0 router in VMware Cloud and AWS. That solution, that's a solution that we picked for this, um, for this scenario. Beneath the T0 router, there is a uh, compute gateway, uh, CCGW, and there's a management gateway on the other side. Well, as you might notice, I'm not putting in any specifics on on which logical port this is connecting. I'm not putting in bandwidth. I'm not putting in physical locations for the direct connect service and the point of presence and all that kind of stuff. That's for the next phase, that's for the physical design. Yeah. So if we take a look at the compute gateway, for example, this is where all the distributed routing is being done. So I'm just calling it DR. And here we have all our logical networks containing our virtual machines. So, um, so this is really just a standard, standard firmware cloud and AWS solution. We have a compute gateway, distributed routing, logical switches connecting to the distributed router, and well, so far so good. On the management side, we have a management network that contains all the stuff for um, HCX, the solution that we're going to use to create that hybridity. We have obviously vCenter server, we have NSX in here, and we have our ESX I host. And again, I'm not putting in IP addresses. I'm not putting in Managing any of the kernel boards. Nothing exactly, and, and this is a managed service, obviously, so yeah. it, uh, we don't have any control over it. But even if, if this were an on-prem design, I'm not putting in all any of those details. Um, 
So the management gateway through a proxy will um, connect to the internet and HEX is a cloud service provided by VMware. So there is a HEX SaaS offering running here, which kind of also connects to the on-prem data center. I'm not going to zoom in on how you need to provision all the stuff in your on-prem data center for HEX, um, but well, logically we're connecting your on-prem data center to the HEX cloud service, and we're connecting the VMware Cloud and AWS data center to the HEX cloud service. Well, on this side, we're missing a few components because what we're really needing is a kind of a layer two extension uh, so we can move our workloads from on-prem to the cloud and back. Um, so we need a component that's called layer two extension and that kind of connects to uh, the logical switch. And on this side, we need a component that's called the WAN extension component that's connected to the management network. So this is, you know, and this is maybe not the most specific or most detailed description of how HEX works, but that's not the purpose of this video. We're trying to zoom in on that conceptual construct, infra hybridity, and we're translating that into kind of a logical diagram. So, um, yeah, I think this is, uh, well, a fairly good example of, you know, translating conceptual constructs into uh, logical constructs without putting in any of the physical details. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, next to the, di the diagram, uh, the topic logical architecture also describes what the architecture actually is doing, right? So what the functionality you uh, yeah, exactly. offer is gonna gonna do for uh, for the customer. Yeah, exactly, and, and we're going to uh, to um, well to underpin that with a lot of design decisions. You know, if you're making a specific decision on, well, I just use the example here of using a direct connect extension uh, cloud service uh, by. Um, by AWS, but maybe that's that's not the right decision here. So we need to justify, um, well, why we selected uh, that service instead of a VPN, for example. So there's a, there's a lot of more detail under the covers here. So maybe that's some content for our next video. Um, yeah, Absolutely. So um, Jeffrey, thanks for explaining how how the the, uh, the transitions from uh, the conceptual architecture to the logical architecture works. Um, in the next video, we're gonna dive into the physical architecture. Um, and uh, yeah, for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.